Hi, welcome back to my channel. And for today's video for the abstract algebra series, we will be talking about the congruence modulo in subgroups. I'm so sorry guys, I still cannot present you with a plant today because uh, as I'm currently replanting all my plants right now. But just so you know, I have down here a picture of one of my collections of plants. So take a look into that. Okay, and thank you guys for your support. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. You might want to check also some of my videos here in this blog. Okay, so let's start now. So assuming that you have a subgroup H in a group G, and uh, these two elements A and B here are coming from G, then we could say that A is right congruent to B modulo H denoted by this symbol. So A is right, so that means um, this is the condition here. A, B inverse is in H. So it seems like... Um, there's something in the right of A, and in this case, B is the inverse. But when we say A is the left congruent to B modulo H, then this is here. So A is in the left of B, and in this case, A is inverse. Okay. Now, um, basing on this definition, we can now create a remark for that. Given that if G here is abelian, meaning to say that it's a commutative this time, then the right and left congruence, congruent modulo H will coincide. So let's double check on that. So let's start with uh, having a right first. So when it is right, so that's A, B inverse in H. Okay, so this implies that um, uh, since A, B inverse in H, so that means um that's an element in h and since h is a subgroup then the inverse of this element exists so that means we have this okay but um this is technically the same as um b a inverse and it's an element in h and since um G is abelian, that means it's commutative, so therefore I can write this in this way, which is actually the presentation when it is left congruent. That's it. So we will consider here a theorem, an important theorem for this discussion for the congruence modulo in <coughs> subgroup. So in this case, um, assuming that your H is a subgroup of G, then the first claim says that the right, respectively the left, congruence modulo H is an equivalence relation on G. So let's prove this first before we proceed with the other. So to show that the right congruence or the left congruence modulo H is equivalent relation, so that means we have to show that um, it's reflexive, it's symmetric, and it's transitive. Okay, so let's, um, for number one, we will double check that this is reflexive. Since um, H is a subgroup of G, then E sub G is an element of H. Thus, A, A inverse is equal to E and its element of H, which implies that this is actually element in H. So if we have to rewrite that, this is simply the same as this one. So therefore, it's reflexive. So we will show this time that this is also symmetric. So let A be in G such that um, this is A congruence to B mod H. So I won't write the subscript R or left here because we are actually talking either right or left here. So H is a subgroup of G implies that A, B inverse is in H. But since again, this is a subgroup, so this will also hold. And so this implies B, A inverse in H implying that B is congruent to A mod H. Okay, let's check if it is transitive. 
So that means we will have to assume three elements here such that A is congruent to B mod H and B is congruent to C mod H. So this implies that by the definition, if A is congruent to B mod H, then this is 1 here is an element of H. And this is also B, C inverse element of H. Okay. Now, um, so these two here, the AB inverse and the BC inverse are elements of H. And again, H is, um, H is a subgroup of G, so therefore... Um, the product of these two will also be a an element of G H. So this means we would have to consider the product here, and um, which implies that if you multiply this, you would get um, and this is actually meaning I am mu multiplying the this and I get e. Okay, and since that's the same as and this is an element of H, which implies that A is congruent to C mod H. So therefore, it's transitive. So since I have shown the fact that um, this is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, therefore, we have proven the claim on number one that it's an equivalence relation on G. So we will show number two. So let's double check number two here. The equivalence class of A in G and the right or left congruence modulo H is the set, this one, for right and this is for left. So we'll check on that. So let A in G and of course A bar be the equivalence class of A. So this is equivalence class. So this is the set of all X in G such that um, A is congruent to X mod H because this is an equivalence class. So X is an element of A bar implies that A is congruent to X mod H. And um, in this case, because of the fact that um, this is symmetric that we have shown already in number one, so I can write this in this way. And so, by the definition, this is equivalent to this. Since x a inverse is an element in H, then I can equate this into H for some H in H. And so, if um, this is a group, so that means I can multiply both sides by an element A. So, that's... Um, a inverse A and I would have H A. Um, this implies that X is in H A. This is for some H in H. So meaning to say that since X is equivalent to X A, H A rather, so X is an element of capital H A, which implies that A bar is a subset of H A. So we'll do the reverse process to attain the equality. So let x element in H A. So what does it mean? So I can write x equals H sub 1 A. So that means for some H sub 1 in H. You can just use any other character as if you don't like H sub 1. So I in this case, I use H sub 1 in H. And then um, I can write this in this way. That means I multiply both sides by A inverse. So this becomes identity here. So that's why you left here on the right side with H sub 1 for some H sub 1 in H. So meaning to say that X A inverse is an element of H implying that X is uh, congruent to A mod H. And since again, we've shown a number one that... Um, this is uh, this congruence modulo H is reflexive, so I you can write that in this way. So this implies that X is an element of A bar, implying that 
um, HA is a subset of A bar. And since we've shown this here and this one, so we've shown the fact that um, HA is equal to A bar. So that's the proof of number two. So to show that three holds, let's double check three. So that means the order of HA is the same as the order of AH and the order of H for every A in G. So in order for us to show that the order are the orders are equal, so we will we can establish a, a function, a mapping, and then we will establish that function is isomorphic in that way we can jump into conclusion that they are equal of the same um, order. Okay. So for number three, this is our goal. Okay. This is for every A in G. G. So this is our goal here for three. So let A in G and um, we'll show that um, H A is the same as H because it directly follows with A H. Okay, so we define a mapping um, F from H A to H um, defined by sending H A to H. Okay, so we will show first that this mapping F is well defined. Okay, so how do we show that? Um, so if we pick H1A um, equal to H2A, so this implies that I can multiply both sides by A inverse because this is a group here. So I have H1A A inverse and this is H2A A inverse. So meaning I have H1 um, e equals H two E, implying that H one is equal to H two. So, which means to say that F of H one A equals F of H two A. So, therefore, F is well defined. Number two, aside from being well defined, of course, we have to show that F is one to one, and then for number three. We have to show that f is on 2. And so therefore, we can jump into conclusion. If we have completed this, then f is isomorph is an isomorphism. And so the mapping, this one here, this set here is isomorphic to this. And then this automatically follows. Okay. So let's show uh, on to, uh, one to one s here. So let's assume f of h1a equals f of h2a so this implies that h1 is equal to h2 since we know for a fact that we can multiply both sides by a so i have h1a equals h2a and so this is one to one okay if f um to show that f is on two so we let h in h then um h a is an element of capital h a such that f of h a equals h actually this already shows that f is on two so therefore the mapping actually here is an isomorphism and so this holds that's it okay so that's all for now thank you so much for watching so if you have any question or clarification regarding this one you can comment down there so that i would know and we will still continue with the abstract algebra series so just keep updated guys and hope to see you soon thank you and bye for now